Hello, can you hear me now? If you can hear me now, let me know. If you can hear me, just say I can hear you. Yes, awesome. We can hear me now. Sorry about that. So where are you joining from? It's 7 p.m. Like so that other people can join as well. Go ahead and share. Like the video and share. So many people joining us from every place in the world. This is so exciting. Um, like and share. So your questions will come when we're when we're almost done. So don't send your questions now. But what you need to do, you subscribe. Make sure that you're subscribing so that you can ask questions. Yeah. OK, Kaduna State. There's so many Nigerians here. That's my people, though. <laughs> Somebody from Cameroon. Idris from Cameroon. Lagos State, of course. Lagos State. Now we the win. <laughs> Somebody's joining from Ghana. Solomon from Ghana. Thank you, everyone. Please go ahead and share. Go ahead and share. There's someone from Sierra Leone. I just saw someone from Sierra Leone now. Kata. Oh, my goodness. Very exciting. OK, guys. So we have so much to say. So we're going to. We're going to start. We're going to start. Like I said, my name is Sheyo Basi. Um, you need to leave your questions until the end. But before you can make, ask a question or before you can leave a comment, you need to subscribe. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel and we're going to start. Don't forget to share it so that more people can join. There's so many people already on. But please make sure you share so that more people can join. So today we're going to be talking about something very important, especially for anyone who wants to come and study in Canada. It's proof of funds, yeah? So I'm going to tell you everything I know about proof of funds because I've been putting these slides together for weeks, yeah? And I've been getting questions that has given me more insight to add to the slides. So after we're done, that's where you can ask your questions. Please, I implore you to pay attention so that you know the questions to ask so that I am not answering questions. Um, you are not asking questions that I've already answered because I'm not going to answer because it will be wasting everybody's time. So I'm going to start now with my slides and then come back and answer your questions. If you can see the slides, please let me know. Just type, we can see. I can see, I can see, I can see. If you can see it, let me know that you can see it so that I can start. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So um, today we're talking about, can you see the slides? Yes, you can see it. So today we're talking about everything you should know about proof of funds to study in Canada. Yeah. So who am I? My name is Sheyo Basi. Some of you know me very well. Some of you have heard of me. Some of you don't know me. <laughs> My name is Sheyo Basi. I'm a Nigerian, but I live in Canada. I actually live in Ontario. It's five minutes past 1 p.m. So I live in Ontario. We're on the Eastern time, GMT minus five. It's 1 p.m. or five minutes past one. That's who I am. And my purpose, my purpose is that I help people change their lives and change their stories. And I do this by sharing pathways to move to Canada. I have made that my life goal. I want to help people because of the experience that I have had. I want to help as many people as I can with sharing how they can move to Canada. So before we go on, disclaimer, this is not immigration advice. This is just for educational and informational purposes. Please always seek specific um, immigration advice from the RCC website or from immigration lawyers, okay? So this is just for information and education purposes. So today, excitingly, I'm going to show you the most important things about the proof of funds to study in Canada nine of the biggest misconceptions misconceptions about the proof of funds biggest mistakes of the proof of funds and how to overcome these mistakes and turn around visa refusals and after then we're going to do the question and answer yeah okay. so that's a lot of good stuff a lot of good stuff don't you agree the images don't look anyhow the images look good i can see that they look good so frank Maybe you need to um, go back, go out and come back for you to see the images well. Um, so isn't this a lot of good stuff? Don't forget to share, share, share. If you're here and you haven't clicked the share button, do that so that other people 
can join. Okay, so this is a lot of good stuff. But then I have one favor to ask. I want us to make this thing very interactive. So when I ask questions, please answer, yeah? When I say type something, please type it, okay? So do we agree to do that? Do we have a deal? Tell me if you would type. If I say type, if I ask a question, will you answer? Uh, let me know. Let me know if you do that so it can be as interactive as possible because I want you to be as invested in this as I am. Okay, this has taken me a lot of time to put together. This is a lot of information that you'll probably not be seeing any, anywhere else, but I'm giving it to you all for free. So we have a deal, a lot of deal. We have a deal, yeah. <clears throat> so please tell me if you have applied for a Canada study visa before, please type yes. Yeah. If you have never applied for a Canada study visa before, please type no. I want to have an idea of the kinds of people that are here so that let me know how, you know, where I'm placing my emphasis. If you've never applied for a Canada study visa before, type no. You want to, but you, you have never before um, applied, but you're trying to apply. Uh, there, there are a lot of no's. <laughs> How is that? That's so exciting. So I know that I'm talking to people who have probably never applied before. And that's really exciting because you're about to learn something that will help you to avoid visa refusals. So the first thing, let's talk about what is proof of funds. Okay. So proof of funds is proof that you have enough money to study in Canada. So when you want to come and study in Canada, you have to actually prove that, you know what, I'm coming to study you. I know that I have to pay tuition. I know I have to take care of myself. I have the money to do so. You must prove that you can support yourself and any family members that is coming with you. So if you're coming with your wife, if you're coming with your common law partner, you're coming with your child, you need to prove that I can pay my tuition and I can take care of them and myself. Yeah. So. Showing proof of living expenses, that's what you need to show. You show proof of living expenses for one year and you show proof of tuition. So tuition is your school fees for one year. And this money has to be both available and accessible to you. So those are two things. The money can be available and not accessible. I'll talk about this in a bit. The money can be accessible and not available. So it must be both accessible. That means you can actually, the visa officer must believe that you can actually get the money and it must be available. The money must actually be there. It's not like the money will be there. Money has to be there, yeah? So it's living expenses and tuition. Now, the other question you might be asking is how much? How much is the proof of funds? I will tell you. So on January 1st, 2024, just this year, the government changed the proof of funds to come study in Canada. Previously, it was $10,000 for one year so you had to show that you had ten thousand dollars to cover your living expenses things like rent food clothes um test books transportation and all and, and all of that but that ten thousand had been there for so many years but the the living the cost of living in canada had been going a little bit up steadily so the government recently changed proof of funds for living expenses so if you're coming to canada and it's just you you would show twenty thousand six hundred and thirty five dollars um, for living expenses. Now, this is not your tuition. This is just to show that apart, after I've paid my school fees, oh, this is the money that I have to live in Canada. So if you're coming with another person, maybe your spouse or your child, one more person, that's 25,690. If there are three of you, 31,583. If there are six of you, you are going to show $49,051. Um, and if there are more than seven of you, you're going to add the sum of 5,559 to this 54,611. And this is in Canadian dollars. So we live in Canada. There is no way this will be in US dollars. That's why they put CAN. So CAN dollars is Canadian dollars. It is not US dollars, okay? Usually this is calculated using the bank rate not the black market rate, the bank rate, okay? I usually use a website called oanda.com. And if you use oanda.com, 20,635 is about 21 million. That's in Naira, if you can also check out how much it is in your own currency. If you can't hear me, you need to log back, log out and come back because I am, um, the audio is working well now, okay? So let's give an example. So let's say you're coming to Canada to study for one year. You have a one year graduate certificate program and your, your tuition is 15,000 Canadian dollars for one year. You need to show 15,000 Canadian dollars 
plus living expenses for for you alone if you're coming alone of 20,635 naira 635 canadian dollars plus additional expenses additional expenses can be any amount so i usually say have something like from 2000 to 3000 canadian dollars to cover flight tickets maybe your medical and other miscellaneous expenses so for someone who is coming to study for one year um then and their tuition is 15000 canadian dollars you so you will show 15000 plus 20635 which is 35635 plus miscellaneous which is maybe like 2000 that will be 37,635. Yeah, that is the total proof of funds for a Canadian stu student visa whose tuition is 15,000. Now, if you have additional family members, yeah, like you know what, me and my husband, we just got married, we are still in honeymoon phase, we must go together. Then your living expenses will be 25,000 something, something 635. So that's an additional five thousand dollars that you must put there. Now, the question you might ask is, what if I am studying for two years? What if I'm studying for two years and not one year? Now, if you're studying for two years, you need to show that the monies that you need to study in Canada are accessible and available. Yeah, accessible and available for one year. And you need to show and explain how the tuition and the living expenses for the second year will be paid. So if I'm coming to study in Canada, I'm coming with my husband, I'm resigning my job. My husband is resigning his job. That means we don't have any um we don't have any proof of income we don't have any income we don't have a business that means we need to show the two years yeah but if we have a business back home or i am coming alone and my spouse is back home my spouse will take care of the second year that i show only one year of living one year of tuition and living expenses i hope that's clear yeah it's one of the questions that i've gotten a lot that's why i'm taking time to explain if you're studying for one year, if you're studying for two years. Now, that money might look like a lot, and it's because of the exchange rate of our Naira or our Ghana CDs or our uh, South African money, yeah? It looks like a lot, but with planning, you can always put your proof of funds together, and that's why you're here, right? Now, the question you might ask again is, how do I show the proof of funds? Remember I said the money must be both accessible and available so for you to show it's accessible and available how do you do that you can show proof of funds with your bank statements for the past four months i usually say four to six months is better but you must show your bank statement for the past four to six months if you're getting a student or an education loan from a bank you can show proof of that yeah if you have a sponsor maybe your uncle your auntie your mom your dad your 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 cousin your spouse you must also show their bank statement for the past four months now there's also proof of a Can canadian bank account in your name i mean if you don't live in canada you don't have to have a canadian bank account or a gic those are not compulsory for people from africa for example yeah you don't need to have a gic a gic is like a fixed deposit in canada but you don't need to have it so long as you can show that you have this monies in your own bank statement or your or your sponsor's bank statement it can be in usd so it can be a domiciliary bank account it can be a bank account that is in uh, pound sterling or naira or ghana cities it doesn't matter yeah the currency doesn't matter what matters is is it enough to cover your living expenses and your tuition if somebody is giving you money to come and study in canada you must also show proof that that person is giving you money. I'll talk about this a bit because this is one very thorny situation for a lot of people. And if you have a scholarship or you're getting funding, you show proof of that. It's very, very simple. Show bank statement of four to six months or show this person is sponsoring me. This is his bank statement. That's all that you need to show proof of funds. Yeah. Um, so you will show that you have the money in your checking or savings account or a fixed deposit account, like I said before. It can be a domiciliary account. It doesn't matter. The, what matters is that the money is accessible to you at the time and it's not fluctuating in value. So that's why it, you might not be able to use investment. It's always good to use actual money, not that I'm investing in this share or in this stock. It can go up and down, yeah? Uh, and the best way to get it is to go to your bank, tell them to print your bank statement. They will print it. That statement should have your full name and address as the account holder. You should have at least four months of transaction history. I think that the longer, the better. And it should have no large recent deposits or withdrawals. Now, if it has, you have to explain what it is. 
it should be a recent statement. It cannot be older than one month old. So you cannot be applying in February and you're submitting a bank statement that you printed in December. Mbano. That will not work. Yeah. It has to be a bank statement that is less than one month old. Yeah. If this, if if the if the slides are blurry, that means it's your network. So you need to go and come back. Yeah. The slides are clear. If it's blurry, it's you. It should be stamped and signed. This particular one seems to be blurry. But you can also use my bank statement to send your, your statement to the Canadian embassy. There's something called my bank statement. There's a lot of banks in Nigeria have keyed into that. So you can just go there and tell them to send your bank statement to Canada. They will do that. And all you need to do is to submit the printout to the Canadian embassy with your application. Beautiful. Now, what if you have a sponsor? Because a lot of us have sponsors. Yeah, the money is, is large. <laughs> so a lot of people might not be able to um, provide this funding by themselves, especially if you are young, you don't have the money, or you have one uncle or auntie that wants to sponsor you. Then what? Yeah. Now, how do you show proof of funds for a sponsor? So if you have a sponsor that can support you financially, a sponsor can also provide things like, I'm sorry if the slides are blood. I'm going to read what is on it. A sponsor can provide you with things like food and shelter if they live close to your school. Yeah. Uh, so you show them a letter explaining why they are sponsoring you. So there's something called a sponsorship letter. That's how we call it. Um, so they will send you, the sponsor will give you a letter to say, this is why I'm sponsoring them. They will provide their bank statement. They have at least four months of transaction history. It must be a recent bank statement. It must be stamped and signed. And there must be no large deposits or withdrawals. And if there are, you explain what they are. And I'll talk about this more as we go. The next thing I always hear people ask is, what can you use as proof of funds? I've said that you can use money that is accessible, money that is available. What can you use? Not everything is proof of funds. I repeat, not everything can be used as proof of funds. You cannot use assets like land, stocks, shares, or any other non-liquid asset as proof of funds. Yeah? A land. You cannot carry a land and give to the school. Now you cannot use a land and pay for food or pay for rent. Yeah. So if you want, if you have a land or you have stocks or shares or anything else you want to use as proof of funds, you have to actually dispose of them so that they become liquid cash that you put in your account. Yeah. Now this is what you can now show. Yeah. You can do that. There are many other things that you cannot use as proof of funds, but that's a deeper discussion. It's not for today. But basically, you cannot use land and other non-cash assets. Uh, so I hear that the slides are not clear. I, I don't know why that is. Uh, maybe I'm the person that should stop and come back. Okay, uh, let me do this. Let me, um, let me do, put the slides up again. And let's see whether it will work this time, whether it will be clearer this time. No, 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 that's not better. Uh, this is better. Let's see whether it's clear this time. No. Is it better? I think so. I think it's better. Yeah, too tiny. <laughs> well, okay. There are many other things you cannot um, use as proof of funds now, but that's a deeper discussion for another day because we have other things to talk about. Um, so the funds is a minimum of four months. You must have your monies for a minimum of four months, except you have sold an asset. So if you have sold a house or you've sold a car or you've sold something, that is the only time that the funds can be in your account for less than four months, okay? If it's not clear, please go out of YouTube and come back again. Uh, so you can be self-sponsored or you can have a sponsor I've already talked about. And anytime you are showing proof of funds, you must explain the source of the funds with documents. You must explain the source of the funds with documents, yeah? Okay, I think I need to remove something here. Just give me one second. Yeah. You must show the source of the funds with documents. 
Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. So how do you get this proof of funds? That's the next question. How do you even get the proof of funds? Yeah. There are so many ways you get proof of funds. Number one is from your savings. Yeah. From family and friends. From gift deeds. So if somebody has given you a gift, maybe your uncle, your father's friend has given you a gift, it's a gifted. From contributions. Contributions from a job or cooperative. Um, so the family or friend can be anywhere in the world. The person can live in Nigeria, Ghana, um, the US. The person can even live in Canada. It doesn't matter where they live. So long as they are ready to sponsor you, their location doesn't matter. But wherever they live, oh, they must show that they are living there legally. Um, so um, you can liquidate your investments, you can liquidate your assets, and you can use study loans. Yeah. These are the major things that you can use as proof of funds. Savings, family and friends, give deed, give deed from uncle, auntie, brother, sister, anywhere they are in the world, contributions, liquidate assets, or study loans. You can also use funding yeah so there are certain programs you are coming to study in canada they will provide funding it can be partial funding it can be full funding i'm going to show you an example of a letter i hope it is clear this is my own letter of funding i got funding we have uh, put a, a red um a red triangle twenty seven thousand and seventy six dollars funding if it is not clear i am sorry um so that I got that funding. So funding is something you can use. You can use scholarships. You can use education loan. Now, somebody might ask, what about pension fund? I've seen somebody already ask. You cannot use pension fund. Why? Because as the name implies, it is pension. It is for your pension. Oh. <laughs> it is for when you retire, that money will be paid to you to sustain you during, um, during retirement. However, in Nigeria, if you stop working for a period of four months, you can take 25% out of your pension money. But you need to have been unemployed for four months for you to take that 25%. That is all you can take from your pension before you retire. Now, pension is usually used as proof of funds for people who are applying for permanent residence. It is not a good proof of funds if you're applying to study in Canada. Yeah? Now, when you are in Canada, you can always get things like teaching or research assistantship jobs. There are lots of jobs on and off campus that you can do yeah, to help you to get money to sustain yourself. However, this is after the fact, because as at the time you're applying for your visa, you cannot tell the visa officer that um, I'm looking forward to working in Canada. No, the money must be both accessible and available to you as at the time you are applying. So at this point, I have told us what proof of funds is. If you see the slides are not clear, maybe go out and come back, yeah? The slides are clear from my, from my end, yeah? So how much, I've explained how much you need and for how long or how long. <laughs> I've shown you how to, um, how to show proof of funds and I've also showed us some ways that you can get proof of funds. So, at this point, this is number one check-in point. If you have a better understanding of the proof of fund, especially for those who haven't applied to Canada study visa before, if you have a better understanding, type yes. Type yes. Now, if you're asking questions and you're not listening, you're not obeying, no. I said, listen first, and then when we come back, we can take questions. If you have a better understanding of the proof of funds, type yes. I can see a lot of yeses. Now we move on. We move on to module two. Based on statistics and also based on my own evaluation of Canada study visa refusals, I have seen lately that proof of funds is the most common reason for Canada study visa refusals. Do you agree? Especially for those who have applied before or for those who have heard about people being refused Canada study visa, do you agree that proof of funds is the most common reason why people are refused Canada study visas. Yes, it is. Proof of funds is one of the number one reasons why people are refused Canada study visa. And I'm going to tell you why. Now, I'm going to show you a sample refusal letter for someone who was refused because of insufficient funds and assets. And that's how they will put it, that, oh, you have insufficient funds to support yourself. Uh, if it's unclear, I am sorry, but I'm going to read it for you. 
I am not satisfied that you will leave Canada at the end of your stay because your assets and financial situation are insufficient to support the stated purpose of study. This is usually why people are refused. Yeah. And a lot of times these people would think, ah, but I showed enough money now. I showed enough money. My sponsor had 100 million in his account. There was good transaction in that bank account. Some people will even say, at this Canada visa officer, they did not even look at my bank statement. They are just unfair. If you have been refused a Canada study visa before, you know this feeling, right? You know the feeling of, now, wow, they are just unfair. I had enough money now. Why, why did they refuse me? Some people even tell me that they did not even look at my application. Ma, they didn't look at it. They just refused. <laughs> and I'm like, how can they just refuse without looking at your, at your application? They must have looked at it now. And then something didn't go right. And that's why I was refused. Well, a lot of people feel this way. And a lot of these people who receive, who receive these refusals are surprised. Yeah? Because they feel that they have met all the requirements for proof of funds. But when you dig deep, I discovered some common mistakes and misconceptions. Now I'm going to show you the, the biggest misconceptions about proof of funds to study in Canada and how to counter them. And the reason why I'm showing you is so that you yourself can drastic, drastically refuse proof of funds, refusal reasons. So let's go. Are you still awake? <laughs> can we continue? Are you still awake? We can go on, right? Can we go on? Can we go on? Yeah. So the biggest misconception about proof of funds to study in Canada, number one, people will say, I have received my admission. Ah, my spelling is wrong. I want to start putting together my proof of funds. I'm always like, you should have done that four months ago. So a lot of people, they apply for, for admission in Canada. They've planned to study in Canada. They've put in their, their application for admission. They've gotten admission. That's when they will now say, now my admission has come. I want to start planning for proof of funds. You are already too late. Yeah? You should have planned for proof of funds right before you applied for admission or just when you apply for admission because you need to have your funds for at least four months before you apply. So that is one of the biggest misconceptions. And these people, they run around and they don't get anywhere. Number two, misconception. I had 15 million in my account. Was it not enough? Now, a lot of times when people say things like this, I will ask them, how much did you need to show as proof of fund? They have no idea. Now, 15 million might appear big in your eyes, especially in your own currency, but did you convert it to Canadian dollars to see if it is enough? A lot of people don't do that. They don't convert their money. The money is just big in their eye and they go ahead and apply. You need to be using this table to convert your Naira, your Ghana CDs, your shillings, your, your <coughs> whatever money is, you need to convert it to proof of funds. You need to convert it to Canadian dollars, sorry. And that is when you will know whether it is enough or not. So I have 20 million. How much do you need in Canadian dollars? You almost must convert. A lot of people don't convert it. So they are not even sure whether they have enough. And they don't have enough because they only, they only just had that misconception of I have this amount and they are refused. The third thing that I hear from a lot of people is that what matters is the amount of money in the account. My goodness, I've heard this one so many times. <laughs> people will say, what matters is the amount of money in the account? The source of the fund doesn't matter. Oh yes, it does. And I have put together, uh, I've put together some GCMS notes here to show us why this person, why people were refused. GCMS note is the document or the report that you make a request for after you've been refused. Yeah. So your GCMS note is that which, what will show you why you were refused, like the details of what the visa officer thought. It is more detailed than the refusal letter. So usually the refusal letter is just like a template, but the GCMS note will tell you. Now, this person had submitted um, a bank statement that had a large sum of money, but they did not explain the source. So the visa officer is saying limited evidence pertaining to the source of these funds. So even though the amount is important because you need to show that this money is available, it's accessible and is enough, you need to show the source. A lot of people, because the way they got the money is questionable, they feel they will just keep quiet. I will not talk about the source and the visa officer will not notice. No, they will notice. If you just have the amount and the source of the funds is not clear, it's a red flag and you could be refused. 
Number four is the opposite of number three. Some people said the amount of money doesn't matter. It is the transactions in the account that matter. Uh -uh, how can? <laughs> they say it's the transaction in the account that matters. And I think that my, um, my GCMS notes are not very clear. Yeah? But I'm sorry about that. But I'm going to read what is here. It says, Stambic IBTC asset management statement shows overall low funds that are insufficient to cover the remainder of tuition fees as well as living expenses for the first year of studies. So this person has provided a bank statement that does not have enough money. It doesn't have enough money, but they were arguing that there's a lot of transaction, madam. 100 million transaction in the account. Then there's 100 million transaction, but the person does not have money. You understand to show that they can support your studies. They might have 100 million transactions, which is great, but they also need to have that money, that 20,000 or 35,000, however how much you need, they need to also have it in the account. So it's not just about the transactions. The transactions matter, but the amount of money in the account also matters. So both the amount and the transactions and the source of the funds matter. Number five mistake is somebody saying anybody can sponsor me. Anybody can sponsor me. Can my boss in the office sponsor me? Can my uh, our childhood friends I've heard, I've heard all sorts? Can 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 the person who lives on our street can sponsor me? Can one man I met in the bus can he sponsor me? Anybody cannot sponsor you. Yeah. What is your relationship to them? Now this is another GCMS note. I hope you can read it. That place where I have circled in red says letter of financial sponsorship on file from uncle but no proof of relationship provided so this person has said my uncle is, uh, is sponsoring me but then no proof of relationship and sometimes when i ask question you find that um he's not really my uncle he's from my village <laughs> then when you say he's your uncle before now you say if somebody's from your village the person is your uncle not really. The way Oibo people understand uncle is that uncle is your mother or your father's brother. Yeah, that is uncle. So this person's uncle is sponsoring them, but there's no proof of relationship. And because there's no proof of relationship, the visa officer has said, I'm not sure that the money will be available to them and they have refused them the visa. Yeah, that's number five. Let's move to number six. Number six is only my sponsor's money is enough. Now, this one is dicey because it depends. Some people will submit only the bank statement of their sponsor and they will not submit theirs. Now, this is okay if you are 19 years old or 20 or 21 and you've never worked before. It's okay if you're a housewife and you have no job. It's okay if you are going from um, your BSc to your master's and you have never worked before. It is not okay if you are a man of 42 years old with three children and a wife and you have been working for 10 years. It's not, a, it's not okay, yeah? You should show that you also are economically stable. Now, I agree that there are some people who are approved for, even if they show only their sponsor's money. I have done applications like that for, for several reasons, but the ideal thing is to show your own money, show your skin, skin in the game, yeah? This person was refused. He says, PA study sponsored by uncle, no proof of relationship, and the person did not show any funds of their own. This officer says, PA showing no funds of his own. So two things are wrong in this refusal. Number one, he did not show his own money. Number two, his uncle is sponsoring. Number three, no proof of relationship with uncle. Now, this proof of relationship is a very thorny matter. It's very problematic for a lot of people because they don't even know how to show the proof of relationship with their uncle or with their auntie because there's no proof. And a lot of them, it's not really their uncle and their aunties. And that's why there's no proof. So even if your sponsor is sponsoring you, try and show your own bank statement. Even if there's no money. Some people say, well, my, there's no money inside. It doesn't matter. Just show. If you're working, show the bank statement of your salary and all of that. Number seven, I don't have to show how I save the funds. So a lot of people argue that ah, there's money in that account. When I say, what is the source of the funds? They don't want to tell me what the source of the funds is. Yeah. So now this visa officer is saying the funds available does not appear to be commensurate to the applicant's monthly income. And I'm going to explain what this means. Now, for example, this person has provided a bank statement that shows that they have 35 million naira. 
That 35 million naira is available and is accessible and is enough. It is sufficient. Someone would think that this visa officer will just see the money and walk up past and accept that this person's money is enough. But this visa officer is saying, look, oh, this person has been working for 10 years and they've been earning 150,000 naira. How were you able to save 35 million? Do you understand? It's not commensurate. The, the visa, this visa officer feels that it's not commensurate. And you must understand that for Canada visa application, you have to convince that particular visa officer. The visa officer has to be convinced that this money is accessible, is available, and that it is your own money. If you are saying that it's my money, the visa officer needs to be convinced that it's your money. But in this case, because this person was earning very little money, they did not show how they saved the funds. They just had the money that they got from one place like this. I'm not going to mention, they got the money from somewhere and put it in their account and they did not explain and they were refused for this reason. Let's move to number eight. This one is, this one is very, very popular. I think this is, when it comes to proof of funds, this is one of the biggest reasons why people are refused for proof of funds. No explanation of lump sum deposits. A lot of people, it's uh, two months to one day when they want to apply for visa, they will run around and look for money, get money from friends and family, put it in the account, print the bank statements. And you think that the person that you're submitting it to is stupid. No, this is your account statement for the past four to six months. It's one million that has been entering, 5,000, 50,000, 25,000, 500,000. All of a sudden, one or two months to when you want to apply for study visa, there's 15 million. After three days, 10 million. After another three days, five million. Two days later, you remove the five million and bring it back three weeks later. Do you understand? It is obvious that this is lump sum that you are just adding to inflate the, the account. And I'm going to read, I'm going to read this thing for you. Now, applicant's personal bank statement shows pre-existing lumps, uh, low funds and multiple lump sum deposits just prior to the end of the statement limited evidence pertaining to the source of these funds the significant change in bank balance lends to the point that the bank account was inflated for visa application so the visa officer is saying that this person you know, just inflated their bank account just for visa application so they had lump sum deposits but they did not explain they just felt that because the money is sufficient that is enough no sufficiency is not enough the source of the funds, the uh, the source of the funds is also also matters, and then the length of time that the funds has been in that account matters. Now, number nine, I said I was going to show us nine. Number nine is this one is I don't know anybody who does this is digging a grave for themselves. I don't know why you would do this. Fake bank documents can fly. Why will you use fake bank documents? Please don't ever use fake bank documents. Uh, there was a time when fake bank documents was working. There was a time, but now it's not working again. Yeah, so don't use it again. You would be inadmissible. Now, this person submitted a fraudulent bank statement from First Bank, and this letter is saying you submitted a fraudulent bank statement from First Bank. If you are, if it is found that you actually engage in misrepresentation, you would be inadmissible to Canada for a period of five years. So submitting a fake bank statement can lead to refusal of your visa. And worst of all, it can lead to a ban for five years. Yeah. So you would not be able to apply to Canada for five years. And even after that five years, your credibility has been damaged. Yeah. They would hardly believe anything you say. So please, rather than using fake bank statement, it is better for you to even look for somebody on your street to sponsor you. It is better than using fake bank statement. You are willfully trying to deceive a visa officer or your agents whom you have given your visa um, to apply for. You did not give them bank statements. They told you that they will arrange, arrange bank statement for you. They can arrange fake bank statement for you. It is you that will get banned, not them. Do you understand? It is you. So be careful when people are arranging bank statement for you. It could get you banned and it is a, it's a serious thing. So PA means principal applicant. Yes, the PA is the principal applicant. So those are our nine misconceptions now if you can if you can address those nine things you would not be refused for proof of funds you can be refused for another thing no but not for proof of funds okay so that's our, those are nine um nine misconceptions now there are many many other proof of funds refusal mistakes 
yeah and i've not been able to talk about here but i've decided that i will do a full explanatory video and i will show you how you can get access to it so in that video i'm going to talk about more misconceptions i'm going to talk about how to avoid them i'm going to show how other people have avoided them and i'm going to give tips and strategies of what to do yeah to show what to do to overcome such proof of work. It's going to be a full video with examples, with pictures and all of that, showing you other people's actual stories. And I will tell you before the end of the video how you can get access to that video. Okay, so let's move on. So we just talked about misconceptions. So did you learn something from the misconceptions that we just discussed? If you did type yeah, yeah, not yes, so yeah. If you learned something, from the misconception type here if you have questions wait till we're done yes you can use more than two sponsors you can use two sponsors but if you start using more than two it, it looks as if you are just grabbing people from here and there two sponsors is fine if you can use two sponsors plus yourself it's fine but please try not to use more than two. You can use multiple sponsors. You can use your own multiple bank statements. So if you have bank statements in assets bank GTB first bank you can use all of them join them together they are all your bank statements you can use as many bank statements as belong to you okay so let's move on the question that i get a lot can you get approval after you have been refused for proof of funds there are some people that come to me they have been refused before and they are scared and they are always asking me Ma, can i get approval after my refusal and my answer is yes yeah yes you can get approval after you have been refused before uh just give me one second one second just one second one second okay so yes you can get approval after you have been refused before so you don't have to lose hope yeah if you have been refused before it's not the end of the world this person that is talking to you like this was refused in fact i was refused so much that it was i see village people were following me yeah but i am in canada today because i did not lose hope i continued to believe so you might be having so many doubts and fears the people that have seen that were refused for proof of funds or other reasons they were having they were having fears but i showed them and i helped them and there was a turning point in their life so these people overcame their proof of funds visa refusers and i'm going to show you some of these stories some of the people that i met who had proof of fund refusals and how they were able to overcome it now this one this is a sad story about someone um came to me after her visa had been refused she was using empower loan she was also getting funding or sponsorship from her mom yeah but she did not present it properly in her application you know you have to show in your sob and explain this person did not even though she had the money it was sufficient it was available it was accessible but she did not know how to explain it and she was refused so what we did was we requested a gcvs note and what i did was i helped her to write a sop her statement of purpose. We did not even have to change anything about her proof of fund. It was just to explain it clearly the way the visa officer will get it. And boom, her visa was approved. If you can read what she wrote here, she said, I feel like screaming. Let me take my breath. She said, I feel like hugging and kneeling down for you, mama. And I said, wow, we thank God because it's all in God's hands. Yeah. She said, my hands are shaking while I'm typing this because she thought that that was the end. She wasn't going to get visa approval, but you know, after rewriting her SOP, she got approval. Now, this is another one. This person had two refusals before they met me for the same reason, lump sum deposit. So they applied the first time they were denied for lump sum deposit. They applied again. Yeah. According to them, they say they explain it was live a lump sum deposit again, and he was just tired. He was saying, I don't tire for this kind of thing. I want to give up. And I told this person, I said, don't give up. And I simply asked, are you ready to do what I will tell you to do? And he said, yes. So I reviewed his documents, corrected a few things. We changed a few things. And I told him to reapply. He reapplied and the rest is history. You can see where he's saying, I found you after two previous refusals. Your Jaguar system is simple, but effective. Yeah. 
So this person had been refused twice, twice, so twice. And because of the strategies that we were able to give them, they got their visa approved. Now, this is another person. This one is a messy one. And there are a lot of people who have this kind of messy situation. This person was messed up by the agent that they contracted for their application. Yeah. So this is one of those people who contract an agent. And the agent has done everything that they could do. And this person is not even aware of the banks. So the agent said, I will arrange bank statement for you. And they say, OK. Now, of course, they were refused because the bank statements, I don't know, the person was not able to prove the relationship with that with the visa officer, the relationship with the uh, applicant. But it was difficult because I had no access to the documents. I had no access to the information that that agent had used previously. And I was saying, I need to know what the agent had submitted before. But it was not possible to know because this person did not even have access to it. So what I did was I sat down with them and I asked them some in-depth question. What documents did you give the agent? And all of that. We requested the GCMS notes. Thankfully, we know we knew the information to get the GCMS note. We requested the GCMS note. The GCMS, GCMS note showed us why they were refused. And we put together a new application and addressed the refusal reasons. And I made this person to know that that agent may have messed up your application. Let us pray that it comes out well. But I did the best. We did the best we could. It wasn't easy, but with God's help, this person was approved see what they are saying they say my god it's unbelievable i am going to canada <laughs> it is unbelievable my visa is approved i am going to canada this is another turn around story yeah you can hear me oh everybody can hear me so if you can't hear me you're doing something wrong now there are many 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 more testimonials that i can't share with you right now but these are people who simply used the visa application and the proof of funds strategies that we teach in the Canada JAPA system. I will tell you about the Canada JAPA system in a bit. And they were able to turn their refusal reasons around and get approvals. A lot of them had lost hope. A lot of them will always ask me, Ma, is it possible to still get approval? They didn't believe that they can still get approval. Let me tell you, even though you are refused, you can still get approval. These people didn't believe, but they were able to listen to what I told them to do, follow the strategies we teach, and they got approval. So what, you'll be asking, there are a lot of people that will be asking, so what did they do differently? What did those people do differently? Now, you must understand that these are different cases and different things were done. But I'll give you a snapshot of some of the things that they did. Number one thing, explain the proof of relationship with their sponsor. We ask them for certain documents. We ask them for certain things we need. And we're able to explain the proof of relationship with their sponsor. For some of them, we had to explain the lump sum deposit. Some people sold land. Or they would say, my mother gave me money. But you did not even explain. So we're able to explain, oh, they sold the property. This is the property they sold. This is the person they sold it for. This is how much. Some of them, we explain the funds, especially for those who were getting help. We explained the fund and we helped them to review their SOP. Now, we also provide free SOP reviews and paid SOP reviews. Yeah, we do very, we did very, very in-depth SOP reviews for these people. Some of them, we helped them to rewrite their SOP and that's all they needed and they were approved. For other people, we just explained the source of the funds. Some people did not say, oh, it's from my salary or it's from my savings. Some people were not even working. And they did not know how to explain the source of funds. What we did was ask questions and explain. Explain how the subsequent year's tuition will be paid. I've seen a couple of people who just showed first year tuition. They did not explain how the next year tuition will be paid. We just made that little tweak. They reapplied and approved. Some of them, we had to just adjust the wordings in their gift deed. Now, a lot of people know about gift deed. They got the gift deed. But the way the gift deed is worded is wrong. So we just show them, remove this from the gift deed, add this, and that's it. And there are many other actions that it depends the case by case um, situation. So depending on what your own refusal is, what your GCMS note says, the documents that you submitted, uh, we, when we have helped many people, like there are many people who have come and they've been refused before, and we just do one of these actions or others, and their visas are approved thereafter. Some of them second time, some third time, you know, some even fourth and fifth time they are approved, yeah? Are you not excited for all those people that got approvals after a refusal? I mean, as I was talking about it, I was even getting excited for them. Are you not excited for them? <laughs> are you not excited for them? Don't put any negative comments here. Are you not excited for them? Are you not excited that you too could be giving your own testimonials? There are some of them that attend our webinars 
you understand? They met me during webinars. They were excited for other people and they believed because they saw other people's testimonials and they believed that it could happen to them. You know, belief is a very strong thing. When you believe something, it can happen for you. When you rejoice with others, it can happen for you too, right? Yeah. So what are the next steps? I've told you about what proof of funds is. I've showed you some of the mistakes that people like you have made for proof of funds. And I've also showed you that it is possible to turn around a visa refusal. Now, what are the next steps? There are two kinds of people that are here listening to me now. There are people that have never gotten a Canada visa refusal before especially one on proof of funds. If you have never gotten it, you have applied though probably, but you have never been refused or you were not refused for proof of funds, type never, yeah? Then there are those who have been refused before and they would like to turn their refusal around. Type I have. <laughs> I have. Even me, I'm typing I have because I've been refused before. Yeah, if you've never been refused before, never, 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 never. You are in a good position though if you are never. If you have, say, I have, you are not in a bad position. You're not in the best position, but you can turn your situation around. And what I'm sharing today applies to you, whether you have been refused before or you have never been refused before. It applies. It works for you, right? If you have never been refused before, you will not be refused in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> so I want to ask a very important question. For those who have never gotten a Canada visa refusal, would you like to avoid visa refusal based on proof of funds or any other reason? Would you like to avoid it? I hope you are saying yes, because getting a visa refusal is very devastating. You will cry like this, eh? the tears will finish from your eyes. Or if you are strong, you will not cry, but it will affect you psychologically because you have spent a lot of effort time sometimes you have spent money sometimes you have paid an agent you have borrowed money you have paid interest and then you are refused it is very devastating so try not to put yourself in that situation if you would like to avoid it type yes and for those of us who have been refused before myself included would you like to turn your visa refusal upside down yeah, village people, village people disappoint them upside down to get an approval. Type yes as well. So whether you want to stop yourself from getting a refusal, you want to turn your visa refusal around, type yes. Congratulations. So for whatever category you fall in, congratulations, because you are in the right place. Yeah. So you can do two things. You can continue to dabble, what I call dabbling. Yeah. Trying to get information on the internet, trying to figure this whole thing by yourself. Getting a visa to Canada is hard though. Do you understand? <laughs> it's hard. It is even hard for me to say it, but it is hard. Canada is one of the hardest countries to get visa. Even on a VC visa. It is hard to get a visa to Canada because Canada is very selective of the people that they allow to come to this country. So if you are dabbling, looking for free information, all this information online, some of them are wrong, you can continue to do that. Or you can choose the fast track. So there's a fast track for the people that don't want to dabble. There's people that want to dabble. So there are two of us now. You are dabbling, looking for free information. You don't want to invest in yourself. Or there's those who are going on fast track. Those people that go on fast track are the people that are getting visa uh, approvals. So these are testimonials. We have, I think we currently have over a thousand testimonials, over a thousand. And we have a testimonials page where you can see testimonials from video testimonials, family testimonials, testimonials from those who are just applying for the first time, virgin passports, this virgin passport, all sorts. Those people chose the fast track. They did not want to waste their time looking for free information online, following people who probably know no road and spending money and wasting time, yeah? So there are five steps that you, that you need, yeah, to apply for a Canada study visa. And we have just completed the first two. We have talked about what is proof of funds. We've talked about how do you get proof of funds. And we've explored some of the proof of funds options that are available to you. So there's still other steps. Am I making a mistake in my proof of funds? How do I explain my proof of fund in my statement of purpose? And how do I address proof of fund refusal reasons? That's for those that have gotten refused before. Yeah. So we've talked for almost one hour and we've only addressed two steps. These three other steps. So 
I will not be able to address it because of time constraints. I cannot touch on everything. We can't teach everything on a one hour webinar. We can't. But I believe that you have a very good idea of what to do regarding your proof of funds. I showed you how people like you turned around their proof of funds and what you need to show proof of funds to study in Canada. However, if you want specific guidance and specific feedback on this, your Canada journey, so that you can avoid avoidable mistakes. There are mistakes that are not avoidable. That one will not even annoy you, but the mistakes that are avoidable, you make them, it can, it can make you have regrets, yeah? So if you want to avoid avoidable uh, mistakes and you don't want to spend money getting admission, investing on a visa application, and then you are refused, then I call you and I urge you and I plead with you to do one thing. Yeah? Priority, your priority should be speed and accuracy. Your priority is that you want to apply as soon as you can and you want your application to be approved. You don't want to make mistakes. Canada has started changing policy every two months. Have you noticed? Every two months they will announce something. <laughs> Canada did not used to do like this before. They have started learning bad things. So every two months, they are changing policy. And they are not changing policies that are easy. As they are changing the policy, it's becoming harder, right? It's becoming harder because a lot more people want to come to Canada. So you should prioritize speed and you should prioritize accuracy. You don't have time to be going to check Amaka on YouTube. Then you not check Chizoba on Instagram. And then they are giving you conflicting information. Yeah, you want to prioritize speed and accuracy. And if you want to prioritize these two, you might want to invest in a guided step by step program. Now, this step by step program has helped over 400 people to get their Canada study visas approved in 2023. And these are the people that I counted, though. There are so many people that I didn't count. There are people that I will meet in Canada. They will meet me in the store. They'll say, I use your Canada Japan system, but they didn't tell me before. <laughs> they just told me because I met them in the store. Yeah? So we have helped over 400 people, including those who have been refused before. Those who have thought that this is the end of the world. No, it's not the end of the world. Yeah? We've helped them. Yeah? So you're asking, does this step-by-step -step system work? Yes, of course it does. If not, they won't, we won't have all these approvals, all these testimonials from people who are, are saying that, wow, I, I, I had doubts when I heard about you, but I just took a chance, yeah? I've heard a lot of people say that to me. Oh, I just took a chance, madam. And then you are the best thing that's happened. My visa has been approved. People are dancing. People are praising God. People are thanking God. The testimonials are everywhere it goes on and on and on there's so many testimonials and these are just the few that I'm, I'm showing you remember what i told you when i was introducing myself at the beginning i said that my goal is to help as many people that want to relocate to canada as possible i speak to people every day i hear all your stories i hear stories of hope dashed i hear stories of people who are desperate i hear stories of people who have lost their monies and i want to help as many people as i can yeah the goal is not to sell you something please take your mind off it because if i wanted to sell you something you won't be able to afford it the goal is not to sell you something the goal is to empower you and to help you to japa that is the goal to empower you to show you what you need to know so that you are not misled yeah and it's only those who can invest in their future that can find success there are people that don't want to invest. I don't know how you want to get a good result and you don't want to invest. So the goal is actually to empower you and to help you to japa as soon as possible. Now, before I move on, let me tell you something. Canada is, is experiencing or is planning to experience an immigration boom. Yeah? Canada plans to invite over 1 million new immigrants in the next three years. So this was announced at the beginning of the year that for 2024, 2025, 2026, 1 million people. 1 million is a lot of people, right? How can they invite 1 million people? How can 1 million people become permanent residents in Canada? And you will not be one of them. For waiting now, yeah? Canada has an aging population and a low birth rate, yeah? And they want to mitigate, uh, you know, their economy dying. So they need people, yeah? They need you. And in the next... Three years, they want one million. And I want you to be one of them. And one of the ways that you can become one of these immigrants, one of these one million, is by coming to study in Canada. This is a route that has helped many people, myself inclusive. I came to Canada as a student in 2018. 
Yeah, I can't get a resident to any army. Permanent resident, I will soon be a Canadian citizen. Hey, gang, gang. Anyway, so this is a route that's helped many people. And this is one route that you can use. It's a no hassle route. It works for all ages, all countries, any person. You can use this to come to Canada. And this is the route that I'm urging you to also use. However, with the complications of Canada immigration, it is better that you have guidance. I said before, another study application is not easy and it's even getting harder with the caps that they have now and all those things. The Canada visa officers, sometimes they are not smiling, especially if you come from certain parts of the world, they are very strict on our application. So you need guidance. If not, trust me, you'll just be paying them money for application fee and the chopping refusal. And I don't want that to happen to you. I want to show you a system that has guided and helped close to 400 people last year to get their study visa approved. These are people from all ages, 18 years to 65 years, people that are single, people that have families. We've had one family of seven that were approved, husband and wife and their five children approved, people from Ghana, people from Nigeria, Kenya, all sorts of country. It works for everyone. It works for everyone and all ages. It is called the No Hazel Niger to Canada Jaguar System. It's a simple step-by-step -step guide to become a Canada permanent resident. By studying in Canada, it's easier than you thought possible. Now, I want to ask one question. I want to ask one question. If you have ever heard about the Canada Jaguar System, type I have. <laughs> if you have never heard about it, type I have not. If you have heard about the Canada Jaguar System, I know that there are many people here who have heard about it. There are many people here who also have the Canada Jaqua system. If you have it, or you have even heard, somebody has even told you about this Canada Jaqua system before, but you haven't even seen the Shea Basi that is even behind it. Say, I have. If you have not, I want to see the I have not. Too. There are so many I have. <laughs> my goodness. There are so many people who have heard about it. I am so glad. So my work is even easy now. Uh -uh. I have easy work to do. Chakra system is very popular. <laughs> Somebody said it's very popular. I have not. Okay. If you have not heard about it, so wait. Let me tell you about it. So this is a, an online guide or an online course. It is a comprehensive step-by-step -step guide. It has videos. It has a um, training guide. It covers all the four steps of the process of um, relocating to Canada through the study route. It is for those that want to study in Canada. We provide practical steps. Now, applying for a Canada study visa is confusing. Some people don't even know where to start. I meet people all the time. They're like, Ma, I have no idea where to start. So we'll show you where to start. So we have um, eight modules of study taking you from the beginning to the end. Yeah. In addition, we show you how to arrange your proof of funds. Yeah. So we show you the best proof of fund strategies, how to search for scholarship and funding, how to get access to long-term international study loans. We also show you how to search for schools. This one confuses a lot of people. They're like, I don't even know where to start searching for schools. Do you have a list of schools? We have a list of schools. We also have search tools to help you easily find schools without tearing your hair to pieces. Then we have tools and guidance to choose the right program for you. And then for the study visa processing, which is very critical and very confusing, we show you how to go about it. We have guided demonstrations on how to apply online by yourself. We show you the documents that you need, you must have for you to submit. We show you documents that your sponsor must have. We show you samples of give deed, sample of SOP, visa SOPs. These are the ones that people have used. People have used them to get their visa approved. They wrote it themselves using the guide that we provide and the template. And we also show you how your family can join you in Canada. In addition, we have templates. Templates for letters of purpose, templates for emails to professors if you are looking for funding. Uh, these documents are already there. You don't have to scratch your head. You just need to model them. Yeah? model after successful documents and all of that. Now, let me pause here on what the Canada Jaguar system is. For what I've showed you so far, how much do you think the Canada Jaguar system should be worth? Okay, some people have it, so they know the price. But it typically, this is a $500 to $1,000 investment. Listen, I said investment. I didn't say payment. This is an investment. Typically, it should be $1,000 $500 to $1,000. It's an investment you are making into your future. I am not selling something to you. I am guiding you on how you can come to Canada using the study route and how you can avoid 
proof of fund refusal reasons or any other refusal yeah and even though it's a 500 dollars to 1000 dollars investment you're going to get it just because you're here you're going to get it at a giveaway investment price of 50000 naira today 105 dollars ghana cities 1666 ghana cities and for all other currencies we also have other, all other currencies if you want to purchase ask for a purchase link from the affiliate that invited you to this webinar you can go and ask them oh i've seen the webinar i want to avoid proof of fund mistakes i want to get the canada jackpot system we are also going to give you some bonuses how to get a job and accommodation in Canada. One of the first things that people ask me is how do I get accommodation? Yeah. We're also partnering with some uh, an organization in Canada that can help you to find accommodation, help you to settle down, open bank statement, uh, do your scene, all of those things. We have that as well. So anybody who is inside the Jackpot system is going to have access to this organization that can help you settle down. They will help you look for house even before you get here. Yeah. And then you also get guidance on how you can um, get a job in Canada. Um, also, important checklist, all the things you need. Those people that are saying, how do I even start? How do I even start? What do I need? Everything you need, you have a checklist for that. And like I said before, we have a database of schools and programs. So everybody knows University of Toronto, uh, University of Saskatchewan, but there are so many colleges and schools that you don't know. We've built a database of those schools, yeah, and the programs that they offer and how much they are so that you can go check there. I want to do nothing. You can check. It's nothing here. Nothing is not there. If it's not there, we have the tools that you can use to search, yeah? That's number three bonus. Number four bonus, and this one is exciting. I'm telling you, no other person does this. Nobody does this. We provide one free basic review of your resume. You can send us your email to supervisors, your SOP for school, your SOP for visa. We review it for you free, free of charge. And what we do is that we highlight the appropriate corrections that you need to make. We send it back to you. You make those corrections and you are good to go, okay? And we offer professional services. So there are some people uh, who, oh my goodness, no matter what you say, they are so busy, they can't apply by themselves. We have a professional agency that can do your admission and visa application for you at an additional fee. But the first thing that I encourage you to do is do it yourself because you can. All these people that I showed you, they are, they are testimonials. A lot of them did it themselves and you can too. So these are all the bonuses that you get. In addition to the Canada Jackpot system, you get all of these bonuses. You also get access to me and my team. So we have, we provide support by email. If you have questions, you can ask. If you are confused, you can send an email. We are going to answer you in detail anytime, night or day. And I'm going to give a special bonus. Remember, I talked about the full video I was going to do. Uh, when I was preparing for this webinar, there were a lot, a lot I wanted to say, but this webinar will be too long. So I'm going to do a full video about proof of funds, showing you tactics, showing you examples, showing you documents. I will even show SOP ideas, like how to explain this in your SOP. If you have lump sum, how do you explain it? If I have this, how do I explain? All the questions that you have is going to be in that full video. But it's not going to be available to anyone, everyone, only those who will invest in the JAPA system by midnight on Monday, 12th of February. If you want that full, I'm telling you that video is going to be like a cheat sheet. You just need to, if you have proof of funds issues or you want to avoid it, you need to get that. I haven't recorded it though. It's still in the making. I'm going to add a lot more based on the questions I get today. And I'm going to make it accessible to you by next week. But only for those who purchase by 12 midnight on February 12th. I know that those who already have it are going to ask, but you know, uh, Canada Jaguar system is only for Canada. If somebody is saying they prefer US, I don't know what they are doing here. It's only for Canada. So I will send that video. It's a special bonus to anyone who gets the Canada Jaguar system by 12th of February, which is Monday. So this is my offer. I've been talking for more than one hour. This is my offer. Will you take it? That's the question. Will you take it? And will you invest in my future? In your future, God, in my future. <laughs> will you invest in your future? So what do you, what should you do now? Number one, I encourage you to not give up. I know there are so many of you who will be asking me, what about this new policy? Canada has a new policy. It's an open work permit. It is what it is. Yeah. I told you that Canada is changing policy every two months, adding things to the policies, and things are looking like they are tough. 
but tough times don't last. It is tough people that do. So do not give up. Continue to fight for your Canada dream, especially for your children and grandchildren. Get the Canada Japan system. Learn about the proof of fund options. Start putting your finances in order on time. If you want to go and study next year, start thinking about your proof of funds this year. It's never too early. Think about it now. Sit down. Say, what are my options? Okay, how can I get it? Or which uncle can I talk to? Can you come? Can you come? Start putting it in place now and start now before there are further immigration changes. Canada said they will be changing the proof of funds every year to suit with the cost of living in Canada. So nobody knows what the proof of funds will be next year. So this is your chance. When things are a bit more stable now, start planning today. Yeah? Because a year from now, you may wish that you are started today. There are lots of people I talk to. They say, hey, madam, I could have started this. I could have been in Canada now. Now, I remember when my friend was leaving. I prepared when my sister was telling me. I did not listen. I understand because I was in that situation too. So a year from today, you would wish you had started today. So why don't you start? Now, while you are still on the fence thinking, should I? Should I not? Can I? Can I not? Is this fake? Is it not fake? Is this scam? Is it not scam? People like you are being approved to come to Canada every day. People land in the Canada airports every day from every country. Every single day, if you go to that airport, people are landing in their droves. And these are people who took action. There's no day that immigrants, students, all sorts of visitors don't land in Canada. They land every day. Those people don't have seven heads. They don't even have eight. <laughs> they have one head like you, but they took action. Why don't you take action as well? Yeah? So my question to you is, do you want to make a change? Yeah? Uh, and are you willing to invest for that change? The choice is absolutely yours. I can only guide you and I can only talk and I can only show you the way and I can only let you know that my intentions are true and clear and firm, but then the choice is yours. Don't forget that if you invest in the Canada Jaguar system by 12th of February, which is on Monday, 12 midnight, you get access to that video. You want that video, trust me. And that video cannot be shared. So don't think that your friend is going to share it with you. They can't share it. <laughs> It is only going to be for those who make the purchase. And there's going to be a way they cannot share it. So this is how to purchase. Kindly ask a purchase link from the affiliate that sent you here. Maybe they are sending you emails now. Maybe you are in a group and they are posting the link there. Reach out to them and they will tell you how to purchase. After purchase, you will receive a receipt. Ah, uh, You will receive a receipt with a button to access the purchase. Yeah. So you will click and after you have purchased, register with your name and the email address that you used to purchase. So don't purchase with Mary and Martha at Gmail and then you are going to register with Martha and Mary at Gmail. They are not the same thing. It should be the same email. You receive a welcome email. You need to check your junk mail and your promotions email. It might be there. You wait for at least 24 hours to get your approval email. It's usually less than that. You get your approval email. It will come with instructions on how you will access you will log in and you will start going through the Jackpot system, taking action. And if you have questions, if you need clarifications, you can send us an email. So what are you going to do? Yeah, so why not try? You have nothing to lose, yeah? You only have to lose uh, refusal. You only have to lose the money that you used to invest. You have nothing to lose, so why don't you try, yeah? Thank you very much. Thank you. I tried to keep this under one hour. I, know I was rushing, but I'm so glad I was able to finish in around one hour. So thank you so much. Um, kindly ask the affiliate who, who invited you for a link to purchase, and now I can start taking questions. Oh, my goodness. That was a run. Oh, 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 oh. Did you guys enjoy that? Did you guys enjoy that? If you did, type yes. <laughs> I need to drink water. <laughs> so if you enjoyed that, type yes. And then we'll start taking your questions. We'll start taking your questions, yeah? Make sure you contact the affiliate that invited you. Get your link. Permit handbook. No, it's not a permit handbook. Get your Canada Jackpot system and start... Canada Jackpot system. Let me correct that Jackpot system. Yeah, get your Canada Jackpot system and make your purchase. Questions. Let's go and look at your questions. Questions, comments, da da 
Dara. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you too. I am so glad. Yeah. So let's look at questions. Does a sponsor need to write a gift deed in addition to the sponsorship letter? So what a gift deed is, is if the sponsor has given you money. So let's say they sent 10 million to your account and they are saying this money is a gift. I'm giving it to Musa. I'm giving it to Chukudi. I will not take the money back. Yes, they need to write a gift. They need to issue you a gift deed in addition to the sponsor letter. Um, let me look at questions. Okay, so provide the link for payment of the investment of 50K. So better day autos, better day autos. How did you get here? How did you learn about this webinar? How, how, how did you learn about the when webinar? Were you passing on the streets of YouTube? <laughs> and you saw it or did someone invite you? Huh? So that person is going to provide you with a link to make the purchase. I'm not a student. What can I do? If you are not a student, then you need to apply for a job to come to Canada or you're applying for express entry. So if you're not a student, uh, then, I mean, you can do other things. But that's not what we're talking about today. Yeah. You are ready to make a change. Chichi, Betsy, congratulations. Now, someone is asking, how long does the whole process take? Which whole process? Which one? Yeah, yeah. Nobody can tell you how much it takes. So, I mean, admission, it depends on the school. Visa application, it depends on the processing time at the time. So, processing times change, yeah? So, I, I mean, I, don't, I can't tell you how long it will take. Uh, is the Jackpot system a book? It's not an e-book and it's not a book. It's a course. I actually said it's a combination of videos, PDFs, templates and all of that. It's a full-blown course. It's not, a, it's not an ebook. It's not something you can download. Um, so can someone who was previously denied apply this month to that letter from the school about the new policy? Okay, so your question is not clear, but um, if you want to reapply and you were refused before, you have to get an attestation letter. I want to believe that that's what you're asking. So you need to get that attestation letter that actually says that um, that you've been you've been approved by a province to come and study. So you have to get the attestation letter. Yeah, thank you very much, Alaji Day. I'm very grateful. And everybody's saying thank you. There's so many people saying thank you. Thank you too. I'm very grateful. Can I use my account that I use for my pool for my husband and children? I don't understand what this means. Uh, can you clarify that question? But if you are saying yes, I guess the answer is yes. You can use the same account that you used for your proof of funds for your husband and children. Yes, you can. Can I use a corporate sponsorship? I don't know what you mean by this. Can you clarify what you mean by corporate scholarship? Is it that it's a company you worked for or whatever? Uh, so you have to clarify. I don't know what you mean by that. Let me look for more questions. Does the sponsor need to write? Yes, I've, I've answered this one. Take a water break. <laughs> I wish I could. <laughs> um, what are the documents that are needed from a sponsor? Yakubu. So that's why you need to get the Canada Japan system. Yeah. Inside the system, we show you all the documents your sponsor needs to bring, as well as options. So if your sponsor doesn't have A, this is you. We can bring B, C, D. If your sponsor doesn't have C, you can bring D. But that is for those. That's insider that information. So you need to get the Canada Japan system for that. I'm sorry. Um, if I need 30 million naira, what does that mean now? Uh, let me look for. Uh, so you said are colleges still viable with this cap? I don't know what you mean by viable, but colleges are still. Uh, admitting students and college students can still apply for visa. So I don't know what you mean by viable. Um, okay. Let me look for other people that are asking questions. So I answered this question. Proof of fund can be in different accounts. Uh, Hassan, please, can you just stop um, asking this question? I put you in a timeout, please. Yeah, ask, your question is the same thing. Okay. So someone says, kindly talk about the cap they put. So everybody already knows about these caps, yeah? So the government has said from this year, only 364,000 
study visa applications to be approved. So there's a cap now. So before, Canada didn't have a cap. So as many people that qualified for study visas were given study visas. But there is a pressure on the housing in Canada. There's pressure for those who are looking for jobs. There are so many schools that are, are sort of scamming students, not providing them with you know the study that they promised. So Canada has put a cap. So there's a cap, and that's what it is. Except you have a specific question, Kendi. That is it about cap. Uh, no, I've answered this question. I'm not again. Let me look for. Do I need a personal statement to be accepted in a school? I talked about this um, during the during the presentation. So watch it again. Can a friend sponsor me? Um, so a friend can sponsor you. So the long, the short answer is yes. A friend can sponsor you. The long answer is why? Yeah, why? As I'm like this, I cannot sponsor any friend though. <laughs> because it's, the money is plenty. Do you understand? Why would I want to study if, uh, uh, sponsor a friend? So why is your friend sponsoring you? So long as you can explain and it's believable and the friend sends you the money, it might fly. Is applying to college still good? Why not? Why not? It is good now. Why will it not be good? College, no school. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you too. Um, so someone says... Will I get PGWP if I pursue a one-year postgraduate pro program? Yes, you will get PGWP. The only time when you don't get PGWP is if you go to a public private model school. Those are the only people that are not getting PGWP. So those people that are going to private schools that have a sort of coalition with a public school. So if you're in that school, you would know. If you don't know, ask the school, send them an email and ask them, are you a public private school? Yeah. And I've seen some people publish the names of those schools on the internet. Yeah. So the schools know themselves. So you can also look for the people that are posting that. But if you went to a college, yes, you can still get PGWP as long as it's not a public private school. Uh, put this person in time out. Yeah. Uh, I just received my offer, Olainka, and acceptance from Trent University. Uh, and now is to apply for Empower Financing Loan. What next? So what next is to apply for the loan now? Go to Empower website and apply for the loan. That's, that's, <laughs> that's what next now? You say that's what you want to do next. So apply. I have a company account and a sponsor. Can I get proof of funds for my corporate account? I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. Um, uh, so, yes, there's a, we have give, deed, and sponsorship letter templates in the JAPA system. We have, small, we have templates for everything. We don't even allow you to think. Yeah, everything is there. We have the templates. They're all there. Um, so, can I reapply for my daughter after being refused? You didn't see any mutual relationship with the stepfather. You can reapply so long as you address the reasons. So you saw this on Facebook. Whose profile? Somebody posted it on, on Facebook. Uh, whose profile? Enjoyed it. I enjoyed it too. Mm -hmm. So if you're not asking about study, I will not, I will jump your question. Uh, if you're asking me about jobs, um, can a can someone with third class get admitted for master's in Canada? Short answer is no. <laughs> it will be hard. No. Let me just say no. Uh, can I get scholarship for my master's in Canada? If scholarships are available for that program and for that school, yes. Yes, it is. Um, how do you apply for the attestation letter? So as at time of making this webinar, we don't know. Right? We don't know. <laughs> so the government has given the provinces up until March 31st for all of them to tell us how we apply. So at this point, we don't know. So we're all waiting to know how to apply for the attestation letter. My wife is into petty business. Can my account statement be proof of funds be okay? Yes, you can. Yeah. Now for Empower Loan, I envision that people will ask Empower Loan. Empower loan is proof of funds, but Empower loan only covers living expense, only covers tuition, sorry. Empower loan for Canada only covers tuition. So yes, it is proof of funds for your tuition, but you still also need to show proof of funds for your living expenses, yeah? Um, 
Let me look. Oh, I love this question by Luis. Is it possible for a student dependent not to be a direct family? The answer is no. Your, 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 your dependent has to be your spouse, your common law partner, or your children or stepchildren or whatever. It cannot be your cousin. Yeah. It cannot be your mother. It cannot be your mother's sister. It cannot be your household that's been living with you since you married. No. It's your, your, your spouse and your children. Yeah. Uh, what's this? Silas, I have a visiting visa um, and I applied for student visa. Can I travel with my student visa after submitting my student? Oh, God, I don't understand that question. Trust me. Okay, this is a very important question. I just got my study visa approved this month in a college program for, my, for May intake. Can my wife submit Spousal open work permit. Uh, yeah, so so RCC has said in the coming weeks, in the coming weeks, read my lips, in the coming weeks, only spouses of masters and PhD students can apply for spousal open work permits. In the coming weeks has not reached. Do you understand? So in the meantime, yes, your spouses can still apply for spousal open work permit. And I don't know why you're here asking. Go and apply, oh, yeah? So if you've gotten your study visa or if you want to apply for study visa, you can still apply for your spouse before they say this, this, um, this whole thing is only for masters and PhD. So Jimo is saying, is it advisable to use Empower Loan? Yes, of course it is. I heard someone was refused uh, because of it. No. I have I have seen many applications that applied with Empower Loan. They were approved. So it depends on how the person wrote the SOP. Yeah, <laughs> it depends on how they wrote the SOP. So yes, um, it can be. It, it can Empower is is a reliable proof of funds. I have two children in Canada as international. Can I apply as well? Can you apply for what? If you, are you saying can you apply for study study visa? Yes, you can. Um, for someone that wants to go to Canada in September 2024, is it late? <laughs> Between now and March, March is next month now. <laughs> it is late, yeah? Between now and March, March has reached now. Oh my God, Zacchaeus, why are you asking this? Is Canada still accepting addicting? Is Canada still, I believe you are saying, accepting international students? Yes, now. How can Canada not accept international students? They are still accepting international students. They are. Um, let me see. Uh, I'm only looking for questions that have to do with studying in Canada. Can a child of one year be the reason for refusal? I don't know what you mean. Do you understand? What do you mean by reason for refusal? As in the child is not your own. <laughs> the reason for refusal, you can see it on your refusal letter as well as on your GCMS note. So I don't know what you mean by that. Um, and then when it comes to master's degree in Canada, they usually take a 2-1. Yeah? 3.0 uh, CGPA out of 4. Hardly would they take a 2 2, but it is not impossible, depending on the program that you're coming from. For there are some people who have gotten into master's program with 2 2. Yeah. Okay. Can leaving a child of one year old be the reason for a visa? No way. No, it can't. It can't. Uh, I wish I understood this question, Alice. Do you need to get a loan for funding? I don't understand the question. I don't understand the question. Um, so Silas is asking, can I arrive one month before registration for classes? Yes, you can. You can. Um, you can. Uh, can proof of funds be a combination for sale of land, car, property, gift? Yes, it can. Yes, it can. Yes, it can. Um, just a reminder for those who are messaging me, I've gotten, I'm getting a lot of people messaging me, Contact the affiliate that invited you. They will send you a link. Don't forget. Don't forget that for you to get that, um, for you to get the um, video I was talking about, you need to have made a purchase by what? February 12th. Yeah. 
you need to have make an investment by February 12th. February 12th, 12 midnight. February 12 midnight to have access to the proof of funds, sell it all video. One second, I'm just putting this information here. So we have a proof of funds, sell it all video. <laughs> Tell it all video, yeah? Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. Yeah? To have access to that proof of all, tell it all video. Now, let's continue to look at the questions. I'm just giving you time to ask your questions. How can I get the jackpot system? Uh-uh, no. Um, ask the person that invited you, yeah, to the webinar. They will send you the link. It's proof. It's post-diploma certificate. It's the same as post-graduate diploma. They are the same thing. They are the same thing. So can someone with a third class enroll for a postgraduate course? Okay, so um, so different schools have different admission requirements. It depends on the school and the program. So I cannot say off the top of my head whether you can get postgraduate with third class in a particular school, you would need to check that school and the program, yeah? So depending on the school and the program, it could be yes, it could be no. Um, so can a company I work for sponsor me for my study? Now, when it comes to sponsoring you, I'm going to just give a general blanket answer. Company you work for can sponsor you. But the question is, number one, why are they sponsoring you? Is it something that they do for, um, for staff who, who, who are performing in a certain level? Why are they doing it? That's number one. Number two, is the company ready to give you all the documents that you require? Things like board resolution. When did they make that decision? A board resolution. Things like their bank statement. And are they ready to send you the money in your account? If they can do all of those things and more, yeah, they can sponsor you. It becomes believable, but it has to be believable. Yeah. Uh, how long does it take someone who has been refused to reapply? So I see some people, they, they refuse them today. Next week, they are reapplying. You can reapply anytime as long as you meet the refusal reasons. But I always advise that you get the GCMS notes, which is those notes I was showing you during the presentation. It will tell you in detail. If not, you will be re reapplying and making the same mistakes. You can imagine you, you applied, you were refused. You reapply again, you were refused. Isn't that very like discouraging? Yeah, you can reapply anytime you meet you are able to uh, explain or address the reasons for which you were refused, yeah? Okay, how important are home ties? Home ties are so important. Like, after proof of funds, the next thing is home ties. Very important. Yeah, very important. Very, very great question. Thank you. It's very important. Um, you can be in Canada two weeks before resumption. You can be in Canada one month before resumption. You can come to Canada one week before resumption. It depends on you. Okay. Can married lady use her maternal uncle together with her family? I've already answered something. I've already answered the question about um, sponsors. I've already answered all, all this. Ah. Why am I seeing the same? Why am I seeing the same questions? Can someone who is 47 years old apply for college? Yes. <sighs> How much is the cheapest university? <laughs> oh my God. Uh, it's hard for me to say there are cheap universities in Canada. I have done a post. If you are following me on social media, go and check on TikTok, go and check on um, on Instagram. Uh, you would see affordable schools in Canada and how much they are. I can't talk about that now because I don't have that information, yeah? Are you charging for writing SOP for someone that has purchased the Jackpot system? So if you were listening when I was making the presentation, I say we do offer one free SOP review, just one free one. So if you want additional SOP reviews or you want us to write SOP for you, yes, we do charge, okay? Somebody is asking what is home ties. Hey, that is why you need to get the Jaguar system. Eh? Home ties are the things that can show that you will come back home after your studies. So when you're applying for a study visa, it's a temporary resident visa. You have to prove that I will come back, I will come back when I finish. And these are things, this is what home tie would do for you. Okay. Uh, so some people ask, if you're, if you're asking these specific questions about your application, you might need to book a consultation. So I'm, I'm answering general questions here, yeah? 
Okay. If someone was refused in 2015, wants to apply in 2024, I hope the gap will not impact. No. Why will it? It doesn't imply. It doesn't impact. Uh, Shola, is a sponsor required to transfer the sponsorship fund to the applicant account? Um, so it's yes and no. So when you are doing a study visa, you want to remove all doubts as much as possible. Yeah. So if my husband is sponsoring me, he doesn't have to send the money to me. It's my husband. Do you understand? We are one. It's easy for the visa officer to believe that they will give me the money when it's needed. If I'm sponsoring my child, it's easy. But if one distant uncle or your company or this person or that person, your uncle, I would prefer that they send you the money. I would prefer that. Um, let me... Will this video be available? Yeah. So this video is going to be available. Yeah, it's going to be here. Um, uh, so yes, Uche, a postgraduate diploma is part of the program that is not allowed to bring in spouses on the spousal open work permit anymore. So as soon as that part of the policy becomes effective, that policy has not started yet. Yeah, but Canada has hinted us that it will start. And if you are a graduate certificate student, your spouse cannot apply for spousal open work permit. You have to be a master's or a PhD student. Definitely, Akimbo. Olabisi, you can purchase it after 12th of February. It's just that you won't have access to that video that I'm talking about. Yeah, you can purchase after 12th February, definitely. But you won't have access to that video. Yeah. Um, read my question. <laughs> Which question? You just say read my question. There's no question here now. Now, wow, small boy. Can a 50-year-old person do a first degree in Canada? Uh, <laughs> a very serious question. 
let's hope it works. Um, settings. Audio. Can you hear me? All good. Awesome. Awesome. Great. And it's loud, right? Good. Okay. So can I see apply? Can I? I like this question. I like this question. Um can I can I apply for study visa while waiting for visitors visa approval? Yes, you can. Yeah, you can. Uh, and don't forget that a visitor's visa is to visit. Yeah. A study visa, you can stay longer. For a visitor visa, you can only stay a maximum of um, six months. But with a study visa, you can stay longer. Uh, so somebody's asking, were you not here, Coco Kingsley? What is the total amount one needs to have as proof of funds? Go and watch where I was explaining about proof of funds, and you will know how much is needed. So you need $20,635 for living expenses, and you also need to show your tuition for one year. Um, so Edwin, since Empower only covers tuition, what if the school is giving funding for that particular course? Oh God, I don't understand that question. I don't understand it, I'm sorry. Uh, so what program can someone with HND? HND, you can do a graduate certificate. That's what you can do. Um, you can do a graduate certificate in Canada. Uh, can do a graduate certificate. Can you help with loan? <laughs> no, mercy. There's no way I can help with loan. I'm not a loan organization now. Uh, I can't help with loan. Okay, how many minutes do we have more? Like 10 minutes, yeah? 10 minutes, guys. 10 minutes. I want to also use this opportunity to thank everybody who came out. Don't forget that you need to make this investment February 12th. Go and get the Canada Japan system. Applying to study in Canada is not advisable without guidance. You even, even if it's someone to be asking question, did I do this thing right? Um, can you clarify me? Even if it's only that one you are paying for, you need it. Yeah. You don't want to go into this blind. If you go on the internet, you go to someone's YouTube and you're asking them questions, they might not be answering you well, though, <laughs> because they have other things to do and you didn't pay them money anyway. So even if it's just to get that guidance, you need the Canada Jaguar system. So let's answer the last questions. Uh, so um, someone is asking, and this is a great question, if the spousal open work permit is no longer viable, can the spouse apply for visitor visa? Yes, your spouse can still apply for visitor visa, but take note that your spouse cannot work in Canada with a visitor visa except they get an LMIA job. Your, your, your spouse can only stay for a maximum of six months at a time, yeah, in Canada on a visit visa. That is it. Um, uh, that is it. That is it. And let me look for more questions. Don't always look for what is easier, Prince. Don't look for what is easier. Look for what is viable, not what is easy. So if you have a bachelor's already, you should be going for a graduate certificate. Um, okay. At what point do we apply for study visa? You apply for study visa when you want to come and study in Canada now. So when you've gotten your your letter of admission and you have your proof of funds that is when you apply for study visa yeah when you get your visa and you come to canada at the airport once the immigration officers are satisfied that you are not a danger to canada yeah and you did not come to cause any trouble they will give you a study permit yeah and then you can come uh yes grace it guides you on how to get loans yeah some of you are just asking your question over and over. I don't like it though. Um, can PGD student travel with family? Why not? There's no, nobody has said anything about traveling with your children. You can travel with your children. However, as soon as the new policy comes into effect, you can travel with your spouse, but your spouse cannot get a spouse at open work permits. Those are two different things. Um, yes, yes. So if you came late, your recording is there. You can always watch the recording. Does my proof of funds have to sit in my account for the whole four months? Great question. Great question. So you need to have, I don't know what you mean by sitting in your account. Yeah. If the money cannot sit in your account for four months, that means the money is not available. Yeah. So if you want to prove that this 20 million is available for me, 
then you need to have had that 20 million for four months at least. Yeah. So yes, it needs to sit in your account and be chilling there and be drinking ice cream and be waiting for you to apply. Yeah. Um, I really don't understand this question, but I'm going to put it up anyway. What site can we confirm IRCC currency? So IRCC is a, 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 is a, is a government organization. They are using the bank rates. You don't need to go and confirm it anywhere, but that's what IRCC is using. Bank rates. If you know your bank rate, use your bank rate. That's what it is. And I don't know why you are saying that Oanda is, is black market rate. It is not. Uh, it is not. Okay. Um, We have five minutes more. <laughs> Guys, I'm so grateful. There are still a lot of you here. Thank you so much. Don't forget. Don't forget. Contact the, uh, the affiliate that invited you. Get your own Canada Jaguar system. Even if it's just to get clearance on proof of funds, clearance on how to apply so that you don't make mistakes. So that even if you use an agent, when they are sucking this, you know that this agent doesn't know what they're saying. Yeah, you understand what they are doing. So reach out to the affiliates that invited you and you need to invest before February 12th for you to get access to that tell it all video. Tell it all, that video. Okay, so let me look at the last set of questions. And then I can release you all to go and do what you want to do this evening. So, um, so, so someone who did a graduate certificate because he didn't meet the requirements for a master's, can he apply for a master's after completing the graduate program? If after completing the graduate program, he now meets the requirement for the master's, why not? He can do a master's, yeah? So you, he has to actually meet the requirements for the master's, whether he has done graduate certificate or he has not done graduate certificate. The most important thing is, do you meet the requirements, yeah? So if you meet the requirements, yes, you can apply. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, I think that I have, I think that I have, um, I think I've answered all the questions. Oh my goodness, who is asking this? Have you done master's degree? Does it have age limits? No. <laughs> it doesn't have age limits. Uh, post bachelor degree great question is it the same with postgraduate diploma they are on the same level yes they are because they both require you to have a first degree uh yes that oh god that's not what i want to show uh, oh god i don't understand this question i thought it was a question that I would understand, yeah. There's no need for you to be repeating your question. Okay, so we'll stop in like five minutes, yeah. I have a family of four. Can I show proof of form for myself first before I apply for my family? I don't even understand. What do you mean? You will show proof of funds for the person that is applying now. So if you're applying a loan, you will show proof of funds for yourself. When you're applying for your family, you will show proof of funds for your family. Uh, how much is your full guidance? When you get the Jaguar system, the information is inside there. Uh, thank you. Chineye, thank you very much. Um, so I think um, I'm done. Akim, you, you are in Nigeria and you have a HND. You want to get a loan for graduate certificate in a college. So for you to get, I don't know where you want to get your loan. If you are looking at Empower Loan, they have schools that they support. So as long as your program, your graduate certificate is in a school that they support, you will get Empower Loan if you qualify for the loan. I'm not going to talk about how much we charge. If you want to know how much we charge, get the Canada Japan system. That's not something I can talk about here. I'm sorry. Um, get the Canada Japan system. So 
now the reason why i'm putting this question for sylvanus is that a lot of people ask this question i have third class in my first degree i have upper class in postgraduate can i apply for msc uh msc the requirement for msc is a second class upper in a four-year degree yeah so if you have so what matters is what you got in your bachelor's not what you got in postgraduate yeah however it's a case by case um they they do a case by case evaluation so you can submit your third class degree and your postgraduate degree and see whether you qualify but normally it is a two one that is it i cannot say whether with a third class and an upper class postgraduate you will get a master's i can't say so that will depend on the school yeah i can't say uh i do not have an i do, I do not have a physical office in your city if I didn't answer your question, maybe you were asking a question that did not apply and you could have just put your question here. <sighs> okay, I have two minutes more. I think I've answered all the questions that... Uh, what was it? Did you get this information from? All this I heard that, I heard that. <laughs> I learned that. I learned that um, someone would not come with his family except he graduated and obtained PG. Where, you learned. Where did you learn it? Did you go to IRCC website and read the policy? Stop listening to people all over the place. Go by yourself to the IRCC website. Read it. Read it by yourself. Go and look for the, the video by the Minister of Immigration. Watch it by yourself and get information. Yeah. So you will stop listening to these people say these people say uh, okay so i think that's it if you have any additional question like this person that is posting uh additional question if you have any additional question that's why you need the jaguar system i've tried to answer as many questions as possible um and for those who have hnd you can apply for a graduate certificate for those who have 2-2, two, two, you can apply for a graduate certificate. Or if you have 2-2 two, two, and you have sufficient work experience, you have GMAT and you're applying for an MBA, you can apply for an MBA. A lot of schools will still take you on. Schools have started apply, accepting applications for September of 2024. So you need to jump on board, get your admission letter, and sit down and wait for your attestation letter. In the meantime, start putting your proof of funds together don't wait until it's time to apply for visa you're not start running around you start at that time it's already too late work on your proof of funds now you can't give up yeah tough times may last tough people last more than the tough times i think we're done we're almost at two hours um don't forget to subscribe to this channel we always share like i always share um valuable information i don't just share information for sharing i share valuable information um at least every weekend sometimes wednesday and saturday but at least every saturdays we share valuable inform information so subscribe click the notification bell so that you are aware of when we post subscribe subscribe click the notification bell let me write it out so that i can see it click the notification bell uh, and don't forget to get the Canada jackpot system. Don't allow yourself to get a visa refusal. Yeah, it is devastating. It's a waste of money. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of resources. Okay. So thank you very much. If I didn't answer your questions, I'm sorry. Maybe I didn't see it. Or maybe it wasn't a question that needed answer because we already talked about it during the presentation please watch the presentation thank you very much priscilla watch it watch it watch it just go from the beginning and watch it i talked about everything i told you a lot about proof of funds so thank you very much guys um i really appreciate everyone who has joined us our next webinar we'll be talking about um all the things you need to get a job in canada for those who say i don't want to study oh, i don't want to study i want to get a job so next webinar it's also a tell it all. five things that you need to get a job and a work permit in Canada. Make sure that you stay tuned. It's going to be next month, maybe early next month. Make sure that you are registered, subscribe to this channel so that you become aware. Thank you very much, guys. Stay blessed and make sure you stay safe and take care of yourself. Peace. <laughs> peace, peace, peace. Thank you very much. Bye for now. <laughs>